you everyone. Uh, I want to begin this day. I mean, it's a part of Balochistan where we all started our struggle. The day where we all faced to lose a leader, a leader who did everything for us and all his concern was to have a land for us. Baloch people, I think we are the only people who are proud to attach the name of our country with our name. I mean, I've been in places and I have met people who will never introduce themselves as James London or James German. We, I guess we are the only people you will meet who are proud to say Shabir Baloch, Mansoor Baloch, because we are proud of who we are. We are not shy to hide who we are. Shahid Akbar Khan Bukti, born 12 July, 26 August. He was head of Bukti tribe for Baloch people. He held so many positions within Pakistan government, but none of them he could sustain. The only reason is because he stood up for the right for his people. In Pakistan government, you will see people within the parliament for 20 years, for 30 years. Nobody wants to give up on their seats because for them it's about the seat. But for Bukti, it wasn't about the seat. He was in office for governor of Balochistan from 73 to 74. He was chief minister of Balochistan from 89 to 90. His death followed a huge protest. The reason was because we as Baloch people, we lost a leader, a leader who stood up for us. He was the eldest son of Naab Mehrab Khan Bukti, the grandson of Sir Shehbaz Khan Bukti. His father named him Akbar. But after that, his grandfather's name, he was called Nawab Akhtar Shehbaz Khan Bukti. His knowledge of history and a person who used to read books when everyone was sleeping. He was interested more in English literature, Baloch classic poetry, politics and history. He was, he was the person who owned the largest private library in Pakistan, which was destroyed when he was killed in 2005. We Baloch people, we have an open door policy for friends, family, and guests. We have guest house where the door is never closed. Anybody can come and stay for days. Nawab Akhtar Khan Bukti used to provide food for years to the Hindu community. He was so diverse, he never let anybody go out. That day, when they attacked. There were 60 women and children, Hindu families, having lunch. They were all killed. He survived and he went to the mountains. He was very close to the Baloch Mari family and they were part of a liberation army. At the beginning, he wasn't against army. He wanted just liberation. But that's when he understood this is a fight for independence. Despite being among very few Baloch to support Balochistan and Pakistan supporting Muslim League, he even voted for uh, Baloch Jigra, which was boycotted by most of politicians of Baloch in Quetta. In 1950, he was elected, but he lost again. In 1958, again, he was elected as assembly by election and interior minister of state, but again, he boycotted, he left the office. He has been jailed for eight years. 
only because of his opinion, standing up for Pakistan, standing up for Balochistan against Pakistan. He formed Balochistan National Alliance in 98. Again, the same year, he was elected member of Balochistan Assembly and entered the chief minister. In August 90, he set up Jamul Watan Party. In the election same year, he was again elected member of Balochistan Assembly. He confined himself in Dera Bukti after the mother of his son, Nawabzad Salah Bukti, whom he considered his hire in 1902. In January 2005, Dr. Shazia Khalid, a female doctor who was Pakistan Petroleum Limited, she was raped by the army captain. Bukti demanded punishment. As the incident happened in his area, he considered this is a dishonor to Baloch society. However, then the dictator, General Musharraf, straight away spoke in support of his office and declared the captain innocent without any investigation. This was the beginning of a cold war between Musharraf and Bukti, which eventually turned out into a full-fledged battle. After 2005 bombing at his residence by the military, 